Good morning, Facebook friends and friends on LinkedIn. Ralph Serpy, your host here in studio with Vivian Manikin and Jody Dunn of the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle, giving you a behind the scenes look at our January 20 minute update. This month, we are going to talk about the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle, one of the largest women's giving circles in the world. <laughs> and it's huge, it's huge. And um, so we are giving you a behind the scenes look at our 20 minute call. We have a conference call beginning at 9 a.m. It'll run for 20 minutes. Our first 10 minutes, we'll talk about the Women's Giving Circle and then we'll open it up after 10 minutes for questions from folks on the call and for folks um, out there in Facebook land. You can ask questions down there in comments and while you're watching, please hit the like and wow button and watch those emoticons <laughs> just float across the screen. With us? Yeah. Great. Yeah, sounds cool. Well. Um, are you excited to join us today? Yes, very. Excited to we, talk about the we, Women's Giving Circle? We are, and we appreciate the opportunity very much. Oh, please. We've been trying to get you on this stage for three years. Who are you kidding? <laughs> so, oop, I think I just unplugged something, Mike. But, are you sure? Okay, we're good. Thank you. So, uh, we are going to go in about one minute. We're going to be talking about the Women's Giving Circle. We're going to talk about uh, the membership. We're going to talk about um, the grant making that it does, the experience that individual members have. And, um, and we'll take your questions. So we really look forward to that. Please remember to hit the share button. That share button and that like button gets this 20 minute update and the live stream out to the world. So thank you very much for doing that. I am ready to go in just about 10 seconds. Mike? Mike says we're ready to go. Andrew? Andrew says we're ready to go. And here we go. Are we ready to go, guests? We are ready to go. Vivian and Jody are ready to go. I just hung up the phone. So we are going to try this again. <laughs> I think I hit the wrong button, but that's okay. It happens every once in a while. I mistook the hang up button for the mute button. Oh, well. Welcome. This service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. Please enter your app. It had to happen Four, once. Six, it's three, a good day eight, for it to happen. It's a good day for it to happen. A little snafu. <coughs> There are 14 participants in the oh, conference. Wonderful. Good. All participants are muted. Entry tones are off. Exit tones are on. Ready to go? Well, good morning and welcome to today's 20 minute update. BCF's monthly series of interactive calls and Facebook live streams uh, to give you an inside look at BCF, our initiatives, and the work we do in Baltimore City. Baltimore County and the entire region. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Ralph Serpy with BCF, and joining me today are Jody Dunn and Vivian Manikin, co chairs of the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Uh, today, we're talking about the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle, one of the nation, nation's largest women's <coughs> giving circle. In fact, uh, some would say the nation's sixth largest giving circle. And let's start out with talking about um, giving circles in general and this giving circle in particular. How did, it, how did we get started? Well, we started um, about 16 years ago uh, through help with the BCF. I want to give a thanks to the BCF because at the beginning there was a group of a, a couple of women and then it, it became 52 women uh, who started and uh, sort of got together and decided that their individual gifts could be have more impact if they got together and, and shared a common purpose. And so that's what, what happened originally. And it has morphed uh, over these 16 years into uh, a, a group of women of 400 and I think we are about 430 uh, at the moment and we're all contributing together and working through committees to, for a common purpose. 
which is our mission, which is to empower women and their families in the Baltimore area to attain self-sufficiency. That's our mission. So logistically what happens uh, is that each member pays um, uh, into the sort of grant-making pot, and then together you make decisions as to where those grants will go. That's exactly right. We, um, we all put in $1,000 toward grant making, but then $150 toward our educational programs because, and administration. So they're both really important pieces of what we do. We have uh, lots of programs to educate our membership on what the challenges are in the community. And then we give away $1,000 per member, which last year was $438,000, wow. I think. Wow, that's so, an yeah. incredible impact in one year, $438,000. Yeah. <clears throat> so you have about 430, 450 members over the course of the year. You've right. had hundreds more women come through the giving circle. What's the experience for an individual member uh, who joins the circle. We talk about giving collectively, but mm -hmm. what's the experience for individual members? Jody? When um, members first in, in, encounter the circle, um, they find that there are actually many ways to participate in the circle. By the virtue of writing the membership check, they are already philanthropists and they feel, they, they have confidence that the money that they're giving is going to be managed well and do good. However, if they want, have the time to uh, participate more fully, there are a range, is a range of activities, educational activities that Vivian was speaking, <clears throat> speaking to that they can, uh, uh, they can go to our uh, briefings on key policy issues that are affecting the Baltimore community. They can go to our book club twice a year. We always choose a book that's very relevant to what's going on um, today. Our upcoming book is Hillbilly Elegy. Um, they can go on site visits. Uh, they can go to Annapolis and learn how to be advocates. Um, and um, if they want to get even more involved, they can assume leadership positions uh, to lead our committees. We have 16 committees, believe it or not, uh, doing various things. So it's kind of a, <clears throat> a uh, multiple levels of, of, of opportunity. And don't want to forget the grant rating process, which is a huge part of what we do. Um, we have a very unusual way of reading grants. Any single member of the, of the circle can be a grant reader. Um, and today we have, we're right in the middle of our circle uh, cycle. And we have, gosh, Vivian, what, 100, 100 readers? 122 two <clears throat> readers uh, right now. So you can be involved as much as you have time for or interest in, but just by writing that check, you're already a philanthropist. And, and I think it's also <clears throat> important to note um, that the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle um, does not have an executive director or a lead person. Mm -hmm. um, the Baltimore Community Foundation provides administrative support, mm -hmm. but the circle is volunteer driven. Yes. So when you say there are 16 committees, mm -hmm. Those 430 members are driving those 16 That's committees, correct. and those 16 committees are driving <clears throat> the circle. Yeah. Right. And right. those committees are not like five people. No. I mean, there are, as we said, 122 okay. on the grants committee, and there are 44 on the post-grants committee, and right. there are 25 or so at the education meetings. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people yeah. that are involved. Yeah, and I'd, I'd like to speak to another side of, of what the experience is. Um, for those of us who have worked in corporate America and in government and in a lot of different environments, the experience in the giving circle uh, from an organizational perspective is just completely different. Um, the women that you encounter 
the Giving Circle are there because they want to be there, and they are committed, and they are passionate, and they are collaborative, and they're supportive. We don't have turf issues. We don't. Ha- we. It, it, it's just the kind of organization that you would always dream of working for. And <clears throat> the women that you meet throughout this committee work um, are just all incredibly, um, you know, smart and committed, and people are all working. Rock stars. Rock stars, yeah. Every single one of them are rock stars. <laughs> there you go. So, so it's, you know, there's multiple ways of, of thinking about that. That's great. Yeah. If, if you've just joined us, this is BCF's 20-minute update, our series of monthly interactive calls and Facebook live streams. Uh, I'm Ralph Serpy. I'm talking today with Jody Dunn and Vivian Manikin. Uh, with um, co-chairs of the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. If you're watching us on Facebook, please remember to hit the like button and wow button and share button and so uh, so you can share the stream so others can learn about uh, the Baltimore Community Foundation and the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. So um, let's go back to the experience of the Giving Circle. There are so many different models of them, but let's really focus in on this one. And what's the experience, um, if we want to talk about the, um, the process for grantees? Um, what happens with the, with the prospective grantees is we, we send out a request for proposal um, in late summer, and then we also have a workshop here, by the way, for potential applicants, which is wonderful. And then from October to December is when the grants, the applications come in. And how many ap- applications would you receive for the Giving Circle? Um, as many as like 150, maybe. Yeah. Um, but some of them aren't, are like out of the region or just for men or something like that. Mm-hmm. So. By the time we, we narrow it down, I think we've had 120 maybe last year, 110 mm-hmm. this year. I mean, it's it's like mm-hmm. it varies a little bit. Okay. And some are startups entirely, brand new. Some of them are large organizations, so they come from all kinds of different organizations. Um, but, but those applications are then funneled into teams, and we had 18 teams that took five or six of those applications and they're in the process now of going through them very carefully and looking at their financials and all of the um, details about their application. And then they decide, the team decides whether to go visit and see the actual work in process um, or, or the, the plan for work. And then they come back and, and suggest to the whole membership which ones are the very best. And then we come and see all these presentations done by the team members um, to advocate for their particular one that they have fallen in love with, and and then we vote on them, and then the top um, vote getters, um, well, yeah, then then we give um, twenty up to twenty thousand dollars for one year mm-hmm. to those, and they're all done. But then the very top ones, the, like six to eight top ones, are then invited to come and apply and argue for two $50,000 grants, which would be an extension of one year. So it would be two year, 50 year, $50,000 grants. Um, and that's at our May meeting. So then in the funding starts in, in July, and then the ones, <coughs> then they're followed by this evaluation committee that I referred to. Um, they make sure that any challenges that the organizations face are successfully done and that the money is spent and everything is right. And then, again, talking about a circle, at the end of that process, after they're funded, they go into our alumni group, which is the Grantee Connect group, and they are a network of all the nonprofits in the area that are doing our work. Mm -hmm. And so they have affinity groups, um, people that are doing work development or people that are doing addiction services, and they work together to try to collaborate more, which is so fantastic. And we have panels about succession planning or anything that sort of fits everybody's. So, so we've so we've talked about the individual membership, m- member experience. We've talked about the process for grant making. So um, can you tell us um, what the circle hopes to accomplish? Like what's the impact of the grant making that you want to have in Baltimore? And the impact that you've had over the last... Um, 16, 17 years? 
Over from a financial perspective, uh, the Giving Circle has uh, put in almost um, a half a million dollars into the community. Um, it, I'm sorry, four and a half million dollars yeah. into the community since since we started. So, from a financial perspective, the collect collective giving has put a lot of money out there. Um, when we talk about impact, uh, with the kinds of organizations that we fund, which is Vivian referred to, a lot of small little guys who mm -hmm. are very passionate trying to build, um, it's very difficult to do what would be traditionally considered an impact evaluation. These small organizations don't have the infrastructure, uh, you know, to be establishing goals and so forth. Um, so we don't do traditional, you know, impact analysis. We do ask the, the grantees to share with us what their goals are. And what we're kind of looking for is moving the needle a little bit. You know, how are you make, making progress? And making progress around what issues? It, our group, we have a very broad mission. Women and families achieving self-sufficiency. Okay. So it, that really runs the gamut of pretty much anything that, you know, could affect them. Uh, housing, advocacy, health, uh, workforce development, education, education um, mentoring, you name it. Uh, pretty much any, any issue you can think of, we, we are funding. So what has impact... Uh, you know, each each organization has impact, you know, in its own way. Um, but the other thing about what we're doing is uh, we call it the ripple effect. So, as Vivian explained, we have over a hundred members who are participating in the grant making process, and a significant number of those women will go out to site visits. So they will be meeting these these potential grant grantees, they will be meeting clients. Um, they'll have the opportunity to do that, and, and as a result, many of these women end up falling in love with these organizations, realizing they're doing incredible work. They become donors, they become volunteers, they end up on their board. So there's just this very strong ripple effect uh, that we consider to be a very positive impact in addition to the financial money that goes Great. out. Well, um, we're going to talk <coughs> about how uh, women can join the Giving Circle in a okay. bit, but first let's open it up for uh, questions from our uh, Facebook live stream. If you've dialed into our call today, you can press star six now on your line to unmute yourself and ask a question. After you finish asking the question, please remember to press star six again to mute your line. If you're following our live stream on Facebook, um, please simply ask a question in the comments on the video below. And if you're tweeting a question, you can use the hashtag 220 minute update. Um, our first question is from Jessica Brubaker uh, from a uh, Giving Circle from out of state um, has a question about the governance structure of the Giving Circle with 430 members and everyone's on 16 committees and um, can you tell us about your governance structure? Yes, sure. we have a, a steering committee um, that is uh, composed of, of Jody and myself uh, as co-chairs of, of the steering committee. But then we have a secretary, a treasurer, an assistant treasurer who are all sort of nominated and elected, the mm -hmm. elected mm -hmm. voted on. But then we have our, our committee structure, and of the committee structure, there's an education, a membership, uh, you're going to have to help me here, who, who am I forgetting, the uh, <laughs> grants and Great. the post grants communications. and communications. So they have a, and there are two, they're always, another thing found sort of foundational is there are two always leaders in every committee. So if one goes on vacation or one is sick, then the other one can help out. And we rotate leadership. So under those are other subcommittees, but they're not at the table. At the executive. At the executive. Right. It's okay. an executive right. committee kind of. 
So if you're with a giving circle, um, uh, another giving circle, a women's giving circle, or another giving circle, and you want to uh, get more information on the governance structure, you can contact Vivian and Jody directly through the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle website, which is www.thebwgc.org. The bwgc.org. And thank you very much for your question, Jessica. If you're on the phone and you'd like to ask a question, please uh, press star six now to unmute your line and ask a question, and we'll open up the line. And you can jump right in. While we're waiting for those folks to jump right in, um, can you tell us about membership and how people can join and what um, if they're uh, if they have to join a committee to join or if they can just write that check to support the work that you're doing? Members can um, join. The simplest way is to just go right on our website, and there's a form on there and lots of information about about the circle, so it's easy to join. Um, however, uh, we sponsor several prospective member events uh, during the year. Um, some are at lunch, some are happy hour type events, and members are encouraged to bring uh, potential candidates, candidates, potential members to <laughs> the, yeah, uh, it's hardly, it's not like a, you know, sorority rush, trust me. <laughs> um, anybody welcome. Anybody is welcome, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and the idea of the prospective uh, member events is to meet other members, and we also have a speaker from a grantee who talks uh, to the prospective members about what it's like to be a grantee and how uh, important the work of the Giving Circle has been to them. Um, I know there have been um, many um, inspirational moments for the two of you because you've been... Um, members of the circle for a long time but can you share can you each share um uh one inspirational moment that being part of the giving circle has uh provided you that you'd like to share with us um the one that comes the three that came to mind were all on grant on on the grants committee and site visits um but the one i guess that i'll speak about is was a workforce development grant and um the we were in a boardroom sort of like this, but there were cli actual clients who had gone through the program that we had funded. And it was, it was just amazing what these women had been through, what they, you know, how many buses they had to get to, to get, I mean, what they go through, to get their child in childcare, and it's just amazing, it's mind boggling. But um, what we were doing was helping them to attain a job so that they could support their family. And it was just so rewarding to hear their story and to pat them on the back and give them a hug at the end. I mean, it was, it was just great and, and really rewarding. That was the one for me that was most, in, that still, I still think about. Well, yeah. thank you, Vivian. Yeah. And Jody? I, I recall, um, a uh, grantee who is an older woman uh, living in one of our most impoverished areas of Baltimore City who decided that she was going to do something about the women in her community who were homeless and uh, literally living on the street. So she started a little organization to, to deal with that and to um, interact with, with her and see how she was scraping together, you know, clothing and food and so on and so forth, um, and literally finding places for women, getting women off the street, and just the incredible energy and commitment uh, that that you know this this woman had was just it was just awe inspiring. I mean, I mean it really truly was. Um, so, and there are many many of those situations that we we could talk about. Well, I can tell you that um, here at the Baltimore Community Foundation and many people in Baltimore are really inspired by the work of the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. One of our questions that just uh, came through is how can we make a donation 
to the giving circle. If, can you make a donation even if you're not a member of yes. and mm -hmm. and um, can't afford the the membership fee? And by all means, we know that awesome. anyone can yeah. make a contribution yeah. <laughs> to the uh, grant making pot of the giving circle at any time. So thank you for that question and and uh, 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 please visit our website to um, to make that contribution. Can I explain one thing about what some people might not understand is that the BCF, the Baltimore Community Foundation, is, is our fiscal sponsor. So they do us the great favor, we pay them, but it's the great favor of taking care of all the money. So mm -hmm. any all the membership fees go into BCF and then when we uh, decide what grants, it goes out of BCF. And so it's it's we don't have to worry about the money, and it's so great when we when we like have expenses for our programs, we just send you know a, a thing in and they pay us back. Or whatever. it's all so magic. It's it's magic. all magic, Vivian. And it's, and, it's <clears throat> and that's why we pay them to to the administration fees. But it's it's really great. You you know that everything's above board because mm -hmm. we don't have anything to do with it. Well, we are very happy to support the work mm -hmm. of the Baltimore sure, Women's Giving great. Circle. And, um, and it's not just the finance and administration, but it's the communication support, the fundraising right. support, and it's the, uh, the program support that we're able to do. So we're very right. happy to do that. Yeah. Well, we're coming up on 920, uh, which means that this 20-minute update is sadly coming to an end. I want to thank our Civic Leadership Fund donors who um, make our 20-minute updates possible. I'd like to thank uh, all of you on our call today and all of us on our Facebook live stream. And, those of you who watched on our LinkedIn and our YouTube videos for taking the time to learn about the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. Uh, we'll be back next month, February 20th at 9 a.m. Our 20-minute updates are always on the 20th of the month from 9 to 9.20 for a conversation with the Central Maryland Transportation Alliance. You can also visit bcf.org to sign up for our BCF's e-news. Again, thank you all and have a terrific day. Thanks for joining us. And thank you both for being thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.